no one is hated more by them than a man called Alex Jones. Alex Jones is the single most censored man in all American history. He was the first media figure in our history to be completely erased in one day, deplatformed. Alex Jones was deplatformed before it was a common term. And not just deplatformed, sued, attacked. They attempted to criminally charge him. What did Alex Jones do wrong? Why are we featuring Alex Jones in the beginning of the broadcast today? Well, because the world is changing and you need to know what's going on. Tonight, we're gonna talk and have a discussion that you will not hear anywhere else. I'm gonna bring in Mario Murillo in just a moment here, but we're gonna explain what is going on in the world. Why Alex Jones is trending on the X platform, formerly known as Twitter. Why this conversation is Tucker Carlson's second most watched video. And why a Christian commentator would even care about this. This is so important for you to know. We're also going to get into what's happening in the global economy. What you need to know going into 2024. And then we're going to cover a reggaeton singer that has given his heart to Jesus. And why he is outshining some of the Christian gospel artists. So this is a conversation you're going to want to share. This is an unprecedented broadcast of Firepower. I'm going to bring in my friend Mario Murillo to the broadcast right now. Mario, welcome. Are you excited about this? going to be good. Well, I'm going to tell you, I've been in front of a microphone tens of thousands of times, but I have never felt that I was ready for something the church needed to hear like this and what we've got ready in store for them. And uh, this show is having an impact. You know, I know we say, you know, we're being censored, share it. Well, that's true, but somehow it's leaking through. And sometimes you'll notice <clears throat> they'll say what the number of live viewers are, and then suddenly there are tens of thousands of views before the week is over. So I want to tell you what's going on. Somebody doesn't like us, and we get it. But I've, I've lived that way. I started my ministry in the University of California at Berkeley, well, Oppenheimer land, if you will, but the birthplace of the Marxist student movement in America. We're in a moment right now where things are changing. As Todd just told you, they're changing very fast. We're not endorsing Alex Jones, nor any of the others necessarily that you'll see featured on this show. But what you will learn and what you will get from us is what you need to know. You know, something I've noticed, Todd, is uh, people are starting to imitate the style of firepower. For some yeah. reason, we have altered the way the narrative works and the way people talk about current events. And I'm watching it. And that's the sincerest form of flattery. And, and folks, I'm telling you, we are not going to back down on this show. We are not going to back up, back down, apologize, or, or change our direction. The trajectory of firepower is going to stay in one direction. Let's expose what is happening in a way that matters to the audience. So what we're going to talk about is two things all the time. Number one, what matters, how to be effective. Let's find out what really matters and how to be effective. It's not God's will for you to be afraid, but it's also not God's will for you to be ignorant. So when you mix wisdom and boldness together, you get firepower. And that's mm -hmm. what this is about. So let's talk about Alex Jones and this interview. What happened, uh, Todd, when uh, Tucker interviewed him? What happened yeah, on the internet with this? This is amazing. So it just shows exactly what we just let in with is that the world is changing. Only a few years back, there would have been a lot of people in our community, in the Christian community, that would have said, Alex Jones, he's a conspiracy theorist, or, you know, why do you listen to him? But something has changed. And what's changed is the world. The world has changed. People have now uh, awakened to many of the realities of our current situation that's going on. We, we've got our heads out of the sand, in other words, as a Christian community. And I think as a country, a lot of people are waking up. And that's why we're seeing so many people hungry all around the country, Mario. When we do different crusades and different events, I've never seen lines as long as they are right now. I've never seen as, you know the hunger that we're seeing out there. So Tucker right. Carlson gets kicked off of Fox News, right? He starts a show on Twitter, which is now X. 
And his show, uh, uh, when Donald Trump was on there, it got, you know, hundred, I think 100 million views, some ridiculous amount, more than what the right. mainstream media, you know, get in their nightly viewership. I mean, it went totally viral. Well, this show with Alex Jones is his second most watched show now. And uh, so what happened was he interviewed Alex on the broadcast. And within a day or so, Elon Musk, who now owns Twitter, said, you know what, L let me put a poll out there. So he puts a poll out about should Alex Jones be reinstated on X, on Twitter? And uh, overwhelmingly, the folks said yes. They wanted Alex back on. So within a day or two of that, all of a sudden, Alex Jones is reinstated. And this just shows the power of Tucker Carlson, the alternative media, the folks that are out there. And shows like this, Mario, exactly what you said just a few moments ago. Something has shifted where people are getting their information is now shifting. Uh, people are starting to understand their, that what the mainstream corporate media is selling is not true. We talked about that a few shows ago. But uh, well, let, let's peel this, this layer a little bit more away. Uh, people are now digging in. I believe we're at a period of time now in the body of Christ where people don't want the milk anymore. They want the meat. They want, they want the substance. And this is very important because this is where we need to go as people of God. We need to be fortified. We need to have tenacity. We need to have boldness. We need to know what yes. the word of God says, and we need to be battle ready. And that's exactly what this show uh, will help folks do as we get into these topics. So I'm excited to see what's going on here. This is unprecedented. People all around the world have watched this video. Yeah, they have. And we're going to look at it in a few minutes. And first, we want to lay some background. Number one. Do I agree with everything Alex Jones ever said? Of course I don't. But I think of something that I watched from the 1950s, the late 40s and the 1950s. Preachers were preaching against smoking. And they were preaching against it in the most un unbelievable way. I mean, they called it demonic. They called it evil. And they were made fun of by Hollywood. They were made fun of. And, and their methods that I, I wish I could show you some of the reels, they were completely out of control. And there's no way you couldn't look at the way they described tobacco smoking uh, and not think of it as being hilarious and spurious. And so they were made fun of by movie stars and by science. And lo and behold, as time went on, the cancer, the carcinogen factor of tobacco became clear to everyone. That's how I want you to see this, uh, what we're about to show you through the lens of that. Not that Alex Jones should be exonerated for some of the things he has done. I'm not defending him. I'm not even agreeing with him. What I'm trying to show you is I want you to see how he sounds now in the light of things that are starting to happen. And I think for that, maybe right now we could roll that video. Let's roll that tape. And so they're all WEF globalist alumni that the big banks on record brag. They've penetrated the cabinets, to, to quote Klaus Schwab. They've put their operatives in to cut off our energy, demoralize us, release the hardened criminals, put the political activists in prison, uh, continue to cut off the resources to make an angrier world. Klaus Schwab says, we're going to make the world collapse. We're going to have everybody turn against each other. We're going to blame the political classes that we own and control. And then when we're done, we'll bring in our new solution. But first, they have to demolish the cultures and societies that we had before with the fentanyl, with the open borders, with the demoralization. And then they bring in their next phase, which is a high-tech, cashless society, robot drone-controlled nightmare. Uh, more than half of the U.S. and their official U.N. maps that they've had for more than 25 years, that are some of my first films, show half the U.S. off limits to humans. Uh, uh, all cars will have to have GPS. Everybody by law will have to have a cell phone at all times. Australia just did this last year, tr tr tried to push it through. And that's the admitted global U.N. standardized plan where you don't leave your house without a cell phone. Every car uh, is, is uh, robot kill switch, GPS controlled. California is moving to ban all the, quote, classic cars. That's any car that doesn't have a digital... Uh, ignition, and they admit it's for control. So if people think things are bad now, the straitjacket, the ball and chain is going on. It's all being militarily run. Our military is great men and women, but at the top, our military has been globalist trained, New World Order people for at least 30, 40 years. They've got almost every general, every person under their control, and that's why it came out in the UK and, and Europe and also here in Canada. 
you pull up the headlines, uh, Defense Department purposely scared public into lockdowns, masking, and taking inoculations. Uh, UK headline, uh, British Ministry of Defense secretly brainwashed and terrorized public. Canada, same headline. They even let you know, oh, the military is here to do this. And now, oh, the CIA and Justice Department is there to help surveil the public to stop disinformation. And it, it turned out, of course, almost all that disinformation was true. Okay, the most important thing, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have you uh, get in on this, uh, Todd. It's very important that our audience understand where we're going. I know where Alex Jones is going. You got to see where we're going. The man offered a scenario that answers a lot of questions. But what you need to see going clearly is that what he articulated was the standard apocalyptic eschatological study of the church for the last 50 years. We've been preaching almost verbatim what this man said from pulpits. It was in Hal Lindsey's books. It was in all of the end time literature that we read growing up as believers in the last several decades in this country. What happened here is that we got away from that. When, when is the last sermon you've heard, Todd, on the second coming of Christ in an American pulpit? When's the last one? Yeah. All right. You, you, and you have to be in a, in a remnant type church. Yeah, you got to be in a, I mean, there are pastors that are preaching this type of message, but in the mainstream of Christianity, you don't hear this. And so aren't we guilty of a parallel? We're living in a, in a parallel situation just as the devil is demoralizing the world to give up their freedoms, to covet safety more than freedom, to be able and desirous of losing so much and being taken care of by government. The same thing is happening in modern preaching and we got to look at it. You're watching me right now. Let me tell you something. You needed a pastor that preached on the second coming. You needed a pastor that told you that the world was going to become a dark and dangerous place. Had you heard that all along, where would you be spiritually right now? And that's the other thing that Todd and I want to focus on. How important is it to be spiritually strong? You know what we had? We've had decades of what I call the blessed Christian. And thank mm -hmm. God we're blessed, right, Todd? We're yeah. blessed we're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We are the head and not the tail. Now, while that's all true, it's not the complete picture. Not only are we protected, but we're also supposed to have something else. Here's what the Bible says. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Now, let me tell you, let, let's look at it this way. Just follow me. What have you experienced as a Christian in the last five years in your life? What have you experienced? Um, a great number of you, if you're totally honest, you're going to say, I have gone through things that I didn't expect to go through. I have confronted issues that were not referenced at all in the pulpit, nor in the Christian literature that I was reading None of it prepared me for what I actually went through. So let's admit, let's, let's, uh, let's admit right now. Yes. In the last five years, you as a believer have gone through things that very few people preach to you to warn you and clearly outline to you that you needed to live, prepare to do these certain things in order to build your house on a rock. And now you know. So here's the dangerous part. We're going to a next level globally. We're going to a new level. And in that new level, there's got to be a further understanding. Five years ago, someone may have said to you, you're blessed, you're taken care of, everything's going to be fine. You never expected to have war between your child and the public school teacher. You didn't expect 
suddenly that one of the battles of your life would be to hear about Christian families where uh, Johnny now thinks he's Jane or Jane now thinks she's Johnny. There was no counseling on it. There was no preparation. But those that were reading the word of God, those that were studying what the word of God said would have been prepared. What it said about perversion, about everything that can be shaken will be shaken. Now, here's the other side of it. And and I need you to to jump in on this, Todd. We are protected. We are blessed. Yes, it's all true. But what we are not is we are not exempted. We're not excluded from the obligation to know God intimately and to have his word rooted in our life. We have Mm. got to be filled with the spirit, filled with the word of God. Then we'll have victory. My qualm with modern preaching is not so much that they haven't been saying these things, but that they create a false security that a Christian is innately going to escape trouble and trial and war and storms right. because of their being a privileged being. Now, here's where it really gets weird. We're doing this while there is a worldwide underground church a church that's persecuted, where preachers and people are in prisons in China, in Soviet Union, I still call it that, and in other nations of the world. Somehow the Americans think, well, there must be a separate class of believer that lives in the United States that is naturally protected from that. So here we have a concurrent event thousands of believers, millions around the world who are feeling this this dark moment that we're living in, in a way we aren't. And we, by the same token, continue to ingest a spiritual diet that doesn't bring strength, doesn't bring life, doesn't bring power. And the question is, what are you going to do? What choice are you going to make? And we, firepower, we've been hammering away at this. God wants to heal your body. God wants to pay your bills. God wants to sustain you. But most of all, God wants to know you. And he wants you to be strong. And that's what Paul said. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And that's what we're trying to focus on right now. The world is changing, but greater is he who is in me than he is in the world. But you can't say that as a cosmetic uh, soundbite. It's got to be real. Go ahead, Todd. Yeah, what you're saying is that the church is level setting. I mean, we're, we're getting off the hopium and we're starting to feel, face the reality. Somebody that operates in like an Issachar anointing of understanding, discerning the times. So it's not that there isn't hope. What, what I feel like as we unpack this, Mario, there's so much that you just said. And I'm going to try to remember uh, every bit of it because it was so important. But what I'm feeling here is happening is a man like Alex Jones is kind of similar to a man like Donald Trump being raised up. It's almost that uh, that that Cyrus anointing, you know, or the Lord raises up these voices, honestly, because the church didn't say these things. And so the, the what happens is it's always some guy, you know, you, the least expected person that the Lord's using throughout the Bible. And I think that's similar here. So here you have a man. Another, you know, flawed man. I'm a flawed man, but, you know, he's a flawed man, like a Donald Trump type of guy uh, out here. And, you know, he doesn't necessarily articulate his words in the way that a preacher would. But yet he is sounding the alarm and, and what he's saying makes sense. And so now we're at this very important pivotal moment, because, as you said, our brothers and sisters around the world, if you think about it in North Korea, uh, the Coptic Christians, uh, I mean, we just go on and on all, all over the world in the Muslim world. Uh, a lot of persecution is happening. I mean, China, the underground church, I can go on and on. And and we haven't felt that in America. We've been very blessed. And, and so we've had this this separate, you know, this whole other thing going on where we had the seeker friendly, uh, you know, extreme growth, extreme grace, 
uh, that type of message going on here while our brethren have been suffering. So now what's happening is the world's come to an apex moment here. Now we're now there's this ominous feeling like something is going to happen. All of a sudden we have to deal with the reality. And in a few moments, we're going to get into the economy and that's a whole nother story, but it kind of goes right along with what we're saying. There, there's many different things that are cascading at the same time, all coming to a head. And so now the American Christian that, that does desire to hear from the Lord and from the Holy Spirit, somebody that's going to their prayer closet and seeking the Lord. Th that's this group. That's you. Uh, if you're watching this show, I would I would tend to agree that that's you. And and if not, you're you're awakening at this time and you're understanding. Hey, what these guys are saying is true. I mean, really, we have nothing to gain or lose. I mean, we have a lot to lose actually. But you know, we're we're saying this because. We want you to, to hear truth, and that's why there's really not a lot of programs that are doing this out there. But that, that's another reason why they want to censor guys like us. But let's get back to this. So American Christians have been, have been in this total separate, like you said, Mario, reality, and now all of a sudden it's all coming together. And so we have to – so there is hope. There's always been hope. The Bible offers hope. Jesus is our hope. And we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And I do think that the, the plans of the wicked can be thwarted, can be pushed back, and so we talk about these things when we get into the firepower perspective. But I think that the bubble, if you will, where it's been, uh, you know, extreme grace, extreme prosperity, extreme, any extreme, that those are the areas that are now being level set. And we're having to face the reality. And that's where we are at this very moment in time. You know, uh, what we really need to understand is that God is at work. Yeah. But we are being fooled not to accept God's answer to the problem, his solution. You know, we're, gonna, we're about to celebrate Christmas, uh, and the Bible says that he came to his own and his own received him not. Think about that. The solution to Israel's misery was in Bethlehem, but it was fought by the very people. It was rejected by the very people who should, first of all, have been ready. That is the common experience, Todd, in, in church history and in world history. Yep. Elijah was a rough character. Uh, king Cyrus was a king that God used, and he wasn't a very, very godly man. But yet the remedies, the strong medicine that God requires, and now we've got a new thing going on, right? What if God wants to disrupt this global agenda? What if God wants to postpone our disaster and give us a reprieve and a merciful thing? At the end of Joel's prophetic word in the Old Testament, he gave all of the, he talked about an army that would rush on the city and march on the, right. on the wall. Right. And he talked about all of these terrible things are about to break out in the city of, of, of Jerusalem in, in the nation of Israel. Then he says, but who knows if God may have a merciful offering and a reprieve. That's where we stand right now. This is why the most dangerous thing that anyone can say right now, hey, man, we're blessed. Hey, man, everything's cool. God's got this. There's no, none of this stuff is real, man. That letting down your guard, that giving in to the idea that all of it is easy and victorious is the most dangerous approach you can take. The most important approach that you can take right now is this. God, what do you want me to repent of? What do you want me to, to get right? Where, where is it in my life where my spiritual, structural integrity is vulnerable? Please, Lord, shine your light. In Psalm 51, David said, you desire truth in the inward parts. And, you know, I, I got I to gotta tell you one thing. But first of all, Todd, I got to ask you a question right now. Yeah. yeah. All right. What do you think is one of the most important things that believers should be doing now when they see all these global events, when they see all of these headlines and everything else, and they see the contrast of the denial that's in so much Christian culture, total denial, 
and and then in the world total disastrous headlines what should the believer do right now well, we got i mean there's several things we need to be a person of prayer but we need to be a person of repentance i mean i think when repentance becomes the message of the church uh, the lord is going to respond to that if you look at every time in history when that's happened i mean literally every single time god has been consistent if the people of god repent something changes it happened during lincoln's presidency it happened during reagan's presidency it, ha it can happen now to your point so i believe the the message of repentance needs to be the main message of the church we need to actually do that we need to be people of prayer. We need to uh, do everything that the Bible says to do. We need to get back to the foundation of our faith. You know, we talk about that a lot on the broadcast. Uh, get off of all these other things. All, all, the, all the stuff that's not in the scripture that, that, that people have made up in the doctrines of men, those are the things, you know, the winds of doctrine that the Bible talks about, running to and fro. We got to stop running to and fro. We got to stop, you know, going to every wind of doctrine. We've got to get into the word. We got to get into what the Bible says. And we have to hear from the Lord. My sheep hear my voice. If we hear from the Lord, I'm telling you, there's times, Mario, when I think I got it figured out and then I'll get into my prayer room and the Lord will completely upend my plans. He'll, he'll completely change them. And you know what? He's always right. He's always right but I wouldn't have thought about it. And then the Holy Spirit gives me an unction. And so as people of God, we, we, we can't rely on somebody else's words. We can't rely on, you know, what this person's saying or that person saying. We, as a believer, have to know how to hear the voice of the Lord. And so this is what God is, is wanting of us as believers right now, to take our faith seriously. This isn't a time to be messing around. This isn't a time to be yeah. half-stepping or, you know, this is a time to be all in. And, and I do think it's a very urgent time but I, do, I also think that the devil is trying to uh, push something uh, ahead of its time. I think that I think that there is these things are going to happen and the Bible talks about these things. But I think he's trying to I think the deep state, the globalist, whatever you want to call the people that are demonized in this world are trying to push this agenda and fast forward it. But we as the body of Christ can slow this down and stop it in this season. And I believe the Lord will do that if we repent. And, and, and accept his solution to the problems, the way he's going to solve this. Let me tell you, I recently read an article about Ronald Reagan that I think is really interesting, Todd, because it was a gentleman that knew Ronald Reagan. It was an individual that spent a great deal of time with him and watched his presidency. And there are a lot of Republicans currently saying, we need a candidate like Ronald Reagan who was charming, who was winsome, unifying. And this guy said, you don't remember Ronald Wilson Reagan. You don't remember him. He had a spine of steel. He shut down the air traffic controllers union. That's right. He, he literally invoked a recession. Did you know that talk? He deliberately yep. created a recession because Prime rate was at 22% under Jimmy Carter. And, and Reagan took office in 1980. And when he did, he said, look, it's going to hurt for a while. Mm. Unemployment went through the roof. The, 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 the pain of that moment, he said, this is the medicine we've got to take. We've got to have a recession. Then he turned it around. The interest rate dropped almost 15 to 18 points. Think about that. I mean, people are complaining right now because interest right. rates have gone from, say, 2.5 up to 7.9. When in the 70s, before Ronald Reagan became president, they were at 22%. Yep. And people were paying interest on their interest. And the nation was about to go under and he brought in the strong medicine. Then he said to the Soviet Union, he said, you mess with us and you will feel the heat of a million suns. That's what he said. He threatened them directly. Not only that, but folks, this man, Ronald Reagan, told his, his opponents, this is the way it is, this is what I'm gonna do. And if he'd have had a Twitter account, there would have been mean tweets. That's right. So when I look at it, we're right there right now. I understand that Trump drives you crazy, folks. But what if this 
is the strong medicine for a globalist agenda. And the thing is, as much as you may not approve of his rough edges, you need to ask yourself, why is he so bitterly and unanimously hated by the globalists? What is it about him? You know, uh, Martin Luther said, the devil only fears those, he only attacks those he fears. Let me restate that. He said he only attacks those he fears. There's something about this man that they're afraid of, but the church can't accept it. And I realize that there are prophets that call themselves MAGA prophets, and I wish they would go on a permanent vacation and get out of the arena because all they're going to do by being spurious, dishonest, and saying things that are absolutely not true. Right. We're at a moment where we need to stop and pray and ask God for marching orders of what to do in this season and in this hour. But it is absolutely impossible for you to get that if you're buying into this escapist, corporate, Christian, made-up version of Christianity. You've got to get into the warfare Christianity. You've got to get into the fire Christianity. One last thing I want to say. When David Wilkerson was alive, I remember the consistent criticism they had of the way he preached. Right. They criticized him up and down. They, they, pastors were saying, you can't listen to this man. Now he's gone. And look, his, his, his videos are going viral. They're being watched yep. consistently because they realize there's something in this. Don't repeat the last generation's mistake. Look at me. Don't repeat their mistake by saying, oh, Mario, you're going too far, or this is not possible. Listen to the voice of God, and you'll know in your heart that we're speaking the truth, that this is a time for you to dig in, put down roots, stand in the name of Jesus, and become a lion in in Mm. this arena of modern life. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> that's some good stuff right there. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Should we go to the next clip? Uh, we we yeah, want to talk should. about Warren Buffett. He's dumping a lot of stocks. Let, let's hear a little bit about that. And then we're going to analyze it. What's Warren Buffett doing? Well, he's selling $28 billion of stock. Look, even for Warren Buffett, that's a lot. Just to give you a little bit of insight, the guy is sitting on $157 billion of cash. Well, really that's cash equivalents, right? Cash equivalents, think about it. If he's gonna earn 5% on something like a US treasury, and he has the option of, okay, or let's buy some of one stock or another, he's gonna say, I can guarantee 5% here, or I can take the risk of what? A few percent, 5%, is it gonna be 7%? Well, the prospects here are uh, very important to understand. Never lose money, rule number one. And so he says, yeah, I'll take the 5% over that. And you see his track record, not just over the last few years, not just over the last decade, but decade after decade after decade. So he knows what he's doing. Now, he's going to invest differently than somebody else, but his method have been working here all throughout. And what is it? It's all about the perceived value of a company at some point in the near future. What are they pulling through right now? Are they able to actually bring in cash, bring in capital and make their shareholders happy? What Warren Buffett is signaling is that next year, 2024, is not going to be strong. That's for sure. He's signaling in his own way that a recession is coming. All right, Mario. So they've been talking about this. They've been talking about a recession for a while. Do you feel it's coming in 2024? Well, I think that God is, is speaking to people and warning them, get your house in order. Watch your spending. Don't be, uh, don't be careless. Be aware. Understand what matters. And I, and I, you know, and what I feel too, uh, Todd, about this is that once again, you, if you hate warnings, if your spirit reels against correction, 
if advice and the signs of the time trouble you and make you want to put your head in the sand, then you need to understand that you are the author and finisher of your own disaster. You yourself have no one else to blame because you didn't want warnings. You didn't understand them. You didn't want to hear them. And in, and the Bible tells us in the Old Testament about how God again and again and again sent voices, deliverers, individuals to warn people. So what's coming in 2024 is something that will hark back to what the Word of God says, global chaos. What did Alex Jones say is the reason for it? Again, I'm not endorsing him. Right. I'm going to quote him, though. He said that that the globalists are even going to take the, the political party that was corrupt, that they financed, and, and, and disassociate with them because their object isn't to be right-wing or left-wing, conservative or liberal. Their job is to create chaos in a world that will accept dictatorship. They will accept global uh, control. Guys like Bill, Bill Gates believe that they're doing it for some noble purpose. It is so interesting how, a, the, how dark the human heart is that Todd, it's capable of talking itself into right. world domination being a noble cause. So what do you yeah. think is going to happen in 2024, Todd? Yeah, you know, this is an interesting subject. I mean, if you think about it, the Fed still has some tools. I mean, they, they tend to surprise us in what they do. And you would think that they would want to have the current administration be propped up. So I wouldn't be surprised if they use some of their easy money tools to now maybe lower some interest rates, uh, start speaking good on the economy. They could probably try to push this out, Democrats, you know, so... Uh, that's where, to your point, though, if they disassociate from either party and just let the cards fall where they may, then that may be what we see is they may just allow the thing to uh, you know collapse. What I would say just from a discernment standpoint is that if, if I were them, I would try to prop this up as long as I could. And then if Donald Trump were to get back in to blame it on him, I mean, that wouldn't that be exactly what the globalists would want to do since they hate him so much? That that would seem like, but the, the question is, are they able to? Are they able to push this out? I mean, you got the BRICS rising, you got all these different changes in the in the in right. the way that the world is transacting. You got unilateral trade deals between countries now going around the U.S. dollar. You got Saudi Arabia looking at China now. Uh, you know, there, there's a lot of changing in what's happening. One Belt One Road initiative in China again. Uh, you know, even in South America, I mean, they're seeing the influence of China. So you see, China still rising. You see the United States being led by uh, who knows who. I mean, I guess some people behind the scenes are really controlling American policy because it sure isn't Joe Biden. So uh, the question is, are they going to prop it up? I, I would say if I were to be a betting man, I would probably say they're going to do everything they can to do that. And, and but I don't know if they're going to be able to do that. And I think that 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 we're really getting into something really good now. OK, well, I believe the whole program, we've been into something good, but we're getting into something really good. It could go this way. It could go that way. That's it could right. go up. It could go down. It could go forward. It could go backwards. And so the Bible asks in Psalm 11, if the foundations are removed, what can the righteous do? So look me right in the eye, all of you watching right now, and let me talk to you about your soul, about what you do as a child of God, given all of this. The first thing we do is we visit the three Hebrew boys in front of the fiery furnace that Nebuchadnezzar has just heated seven times hotter than it was designed to be. He's about to throw them in. And before he throws them in, he asks them a question. Now, before I tell you what the question is, and many of you already know it, because thank God for so many that tune in to Firepower know their Bible. And we found that out about you. You know your Bible. But before I ask you the question, here comes the, the point. You want to get rid of fear? Want to get rid of doubt? Want to get rid of depression, insecurity, confusion? Here's how you get rid of it. Throw the question of your deliverance over to the side. It's no longer about deliverance. 
It, it, and through the fog, the three Hebrew children knew exactly what was going on because they wanted the king, the king needed an answer to his question. Is your God able to deliver you from the fiery furnace? That is the question. Right now, the question is not what's going to happen to your money. What's going to happen to your, your future? What's going to happen to the government? What's going to happen to the weather? None of that matters. What matters is, am I loyal to God? No matter what. Am I loyal to God? No matter what. Because this is exactly what they wanted him to do. Give up their faith. Recant their commitment to God. And the way it works is this. Let me rephrase it. Three Hebrew children. Is your God able to deliver you from this fiery furnace? They said, yes, our God is able. But even if he doesn't, we are not going to bow down and worship the idol. There, there comes a point of almost righteous anger where it becomes more about we're even embarrassed that we are so obsessed with self-preservation. When we see a culture that in every level wants us to give up God and give up our morals, give up our priorities and our values, surrender our, our integrity to some system. And suddenly believers have got to get so angry, so above that dialogue that they look at it and say, dude, I know what you're trying to get me to do. Be afraid, cave in, create a Christian message that doesn't have the cross, the blood or hell in it. But I'm going to tell you something. My God is able to deliver me from every modern crisis. But even if he doesn't, I am not going to worship the idol of globalism. I am not going to stand with those who hate God. And I'm not going to invent some safer mutation of the gospel of Christ because it'll protect me from suffering. I'm not going to do it. And that's when God delivered them. They didn't even have the smell of smoke. Mm -hmm. And brother, I'm telling you, uh, in this studio, I've never felt anything in the studio like what I just felt. Yes. This is the word yeah. of the Lord to this you who are it. watching. This is it. This is it. If somebody takes this and applies it, you're going to be set up for success. This is what God is saying. Come out from among them. Come out of this Babylon system. That's what he wants us to do. He doesn't want us to be a part of this thing in it, but not of it. And faith is the currency. Faith is the currency. If you think it without faith, you can't please God. But with the faith of a mustard seed, you can move the mountain. He wants us to trust him with all of our heart. Mario, I believe from the beginning of time until now, God has been looking for a people that will trust him. He's been looking for a people that will trust him. Will we be that person? Will we be that generation where we say, Lord, I trust you and I'm going to do your work. I'm going to wake up every day. And instead of it being about what you can do for me, God, I'm going to say, what can I do for you? What can I do to make a difference? How can I be the change? We've got to stop cowering in a corner. And when the devil presents his plan, we got to remember, we got to present God's plan. He's on the losing team. He's going down. He's going to the lake of fire, bottomless pit. We're the ones that are going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ for all eternity. So we're on the winning team. And so we can't buy into this doom and gloom. It is, it's happening, but we can, we can, we can happen to the end times. You've said it so many times, Mario. And I just, I just feel like this message tonight, if we apply this, something is going to shift in our life. We're going into a new year. It's a new season. This is going to change things in your life. If we apply this, you know, and, and so these are nuggets. I mean, you talk about David Wilkerson's words and I, I love David Wilkerson's sermons, but I'm telling you, there's going to be a point where people play this video and, and they're going to hear Mario Murillo's words because you're speaking the truth. Well, I, I want to tell you that I believe that, you know, normally we pray at the end of this uh, broadcast, but I think we ought to pray right now. Yeah. yeah. And, and I, I think if, according to Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20, if any two of you shall agree as touching anything on earth, and I don't want this audience to misunderstand us, Todd. I don't want them to misunderstand us. I want them to get exactly what it is that we're trying to say to them. There is a massive hope. Nothing can take away your hope. 
You have an endowment in heaven. Nobody can take that away. And so we're going to pray. And let's, let's both be on the screen right now so that they can see us. And we're saying this in the name of Jesus, the blood of Christ protects your child. Even if they're lost and wayward, the Bible tells us in Psalms, the seed of the righteous shall be redeemed. Thank you, Lord, for the power that's going out on this broadcast right now. Thank you for the anointing on a discouraged pastor who feels foolish because he stayed true to the Bible. God help him to not see all the people that walked out when he stood for truth but to help him understand, help him or her to understand the truth of the word of God is going to bring the people in, the right people. Lord, heal sickness from those that are watching and remove discouragement, confusion, and doubt. Remove it now in Jesus' name. And go ahead, Todd, you pray as well. Yes. And I want to pray for prodigals. I want to pray for those children that you've been standing for. Mother, father, if you've been discouraged about them, you're, you're watching what they're doing and you're like, Lord, are you hearing my prayers? God is hearing your prayers. He's going to answer those prayers. We can't grow weary in this season. So Lord, I just want to thank you for bringing the prodigals back. I want to thank you that anybody watching this right now, I, I pray they're being encouraged in their faith, strengthened in their faith right now, that we would learn to encourage ourselves in you, Lord God. I, I pray that we would learn to understand that you are our source. You are our present help in time of need. And boy, are we in time of need, Lord, but we have learned to trust in you. Let us trust in you, God, please. Lord God, let us not get weary. I know this has been something the devil's been trying to use against us. He's been trying to use weariness, anxiety, fear, yeah. doubt. Lord, you say in your word, those are not of you. We know they're not of you. We know it. the scripture says clearly they're not of you. Let us stand tall. Let us stand firm. Let us be like that tree that's planted by the water. Let us speak words of life. Let us declare and decree. Lord, let us be your body. We are your body, Lord God. Let us represent you well. We're meant to be the salt and the light. And Lord, we're not going to lose our saltiness in this time. In fact, I believe this is the greatest hour, Lord. You brought us here in the world for such a time as this. So I pray that everyone watching would be encouraged and strengthened in their faith right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And thank God for the good things that are going on. And uh, there is an amazing testimony of a very, very famous artist, musical artist that has found God. Tell us about that, Todd, and, and then yeah. let's look at this. This this guy is a is a huge uh, guy in the reggaeton world. So if you're in the Latino world and you know about reggaeton, uh, he's his daddy something here. Let me see if I can find him. We're gonna play yeah. play Yankee it. Daddy. <laughs> Yankee, yeah. there it is, Yankee Daddy. I personally never listened to him, but I heard about him. Uh, when he was given his testimony and man, this guy's bold. I mean, he got out there on the stage and came out and shared about Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and watch this. Daddy Yankee, the world famous Puerto Rican rapper known as the king of reggaeton left fans in shock when he announced his retirement from the stage for an important reason. Pero me di cuenta de algo que dice la Biblia. ¿De qué le vale al hombre ganar el mundo entero si pierde su alma? Por eso esta noche reconozco y no me hago hueso en decirle al mundo entero que Jesús vive en mí. Y que yo viviré para él. Mm. And then, and then you got the Christian uh, devil warts here, Mario. So you got, uh, yeah, yeah let's daddy, do it. Daddy. Let's shame them. Let's shame them straight yeah. up. World famous singer, 10 times more famous than anybody you see on the screen. And here the individual in the spotted dress with the, uh, necklace has said that he has left God. He was a Christian singer, Christian artist, and he has said that he has left God. The world famous rapper is turning to Christ in front of his crowd. This guy decides to crash the Dove Awards in a dress. 
And I'm going to say it because that's exactly what happened. The one on the left is uh, Flamey Grant. And she's been, he rather, has been celebrated by the woke Christians. So here, how embarrassing is this? That these Christian artists are leaving their faith even as world famous rock and rap yep. gods are coming into the kingdom and willing mm. to give it all up. All they had to give up was a fraction of what, I mean, what these Christian artists were being paid that wasn't enough for them is chump change compared to what this man was making. That's right. That's and right. now he knows the truth. And yeah, I'm rebuking him right now. I'm rebuking them and I'm rebuking every wispy woke Christian that thinks that what they did in deconstructing their faith is somehow progress. It's mm. destruction. It's shameful. And I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. And yes. I thank God for Yankee Daddy. Come on. And the <laughs> miracle. What a ministry. What does it profit a man if he gains the whole world? That's right. And lose That's his right. own soul. Nothing. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Okay. If we made enough trouble tonight, uh, Todd, <laughs> we <you> made, <laughs> we've stirred some stuff up. Hey, the anointing of the Holy Spirit has been here this whole broadcast. I mean, honestly, I, 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 I'm tearing up here just by what God has been doing. I mean, yeah. it, this is an amazing broadcast tonight. What it is, is it's truth. And Mario, thank you. Thank you for sharing what you did tonight. And I just believe to those watching, this thank is firepower. You, man. This is firepower. This is what sets us up for success. You know, we encourage each other in Christ. We exhort one another. We sharpen one another. We speak the truth. And then we go out, we make disciples. We go out, we make it about souls. And if you make it about souls, the Lord's favor is on you. His blessing is on you. You don't have to worry about finances. He will take care of you. He takes care of the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. How much more will he take care of you and I? He owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He's not lacking. He's not out of resources. Nope. He will get us through whatever is going to come. But the, the main thing is what you said, Mario, is that we have our eyes fixed on Jesus, that we're, we're, we're living right. out, we're, we're, we're living in view of eternity, and we're walking out what the scripture says.